thanks very much for coming along to this event concerning military pollution in uh, non-war zones. We talked often in this room about um, freedom of information, freedom of the press. We've talked about the situation prevailing in Italy. We've talked about the situation that uh, unfortunately prevails in other countries such as Hungary. We talked about the problems related to lack of press freedom. So we know what uh, what it means, unfortunately, when uh, there is a restriction on information that's available. We simply need to admit that there is a pollution spread all over the globe. And due to the fact that in Europe we have had so many military confrontations, I simply need to say that we are amongst the most polluted parts of the world, despite we ignore that. So this is a very, very relevant issue. But, but there are um, contradictions here. Obviously you want to have modern technology, but you, but, but but you also want safety. How do you overcome uh, those contradictions? I don't have any major proposals to, or major solutions, but I've got one last thing to say. What we need to do is provide information. We need to be ensure that there is basic democracy. We're spending a great deal of money to assess the nanotoxicology of nanoproducts. And you find that there are unwanted formations of nanoparticles as a result of explosions. Now, this can get in direct contact with DNA, and that means that the DNA is damaged, and that can then lead to cancer or a whole raft of other problems. So there is clear scientific evidence that shows that specific pollution of a certain type can lead to problems in the environment and can lead to health problems. I hope that what we've created so far, they've created this network of people who are interested in this matter, and I hope this will uh, help with the awareness raising, but I also hope this will help us to achieve critical mass so that public authorities will start to move and that we'll finally uh, public authorities will provide the truth, because the truth belongs um, not to the state, but to the people. And I hope that the added value would be that finally we'd get some policy changes. We want the environment to recover. We want to get rid of harmful materials, but we also want activity in the site to continue. So for the future, we need to make sure that we have greater transparency as to what is happening on the site, and we need to make sure that we continue to provide information to the Sardinian community about what is happening there. We should train teams of experts who can produce the necessary expertise in situ. We can monitor the technology needed to recover the materials and dispose of those materials. The issue of uh, Quira and its uh, firing range have already gone beyond the island of Sardinia. The, the shock waves have gone have gone further than Sardinia. This has been simulated war on on Quira, but also we see a war of different ideologies taking place there. Leaving aside the fact that there is a leaving aside whether there is a real health problem there, and Oliastra and Sarabus have uh, become the only innocent victims of this. As I say, that the territory has been destroyed. Madalena is not an area where exercises are carried out or experiments, uh, unlike uh, what is the case in La Quira on the firing range. Our problem is that uh, the military forces are leaving our island. We're having serious problems. There's a 2009 regional law which identifies La Madalena officially as an area in crisis. We're a disadvantaged region and this should now allow us to have uh, access to certain funds to, to develop local issues. So we're trying to set up projects which allow us to explore new economic activities.